Michael Bell. I'm actually a senior investigator for the New York State Department of Corrections. Uh, on 9-11, I was actually, I guess you would consider it fortunate, I was working out way out in Long Island in Quorum. Usually I'm working in the five boroughs. I mean, I, I tried every which way to get to the city when I heard what was going on, and it just was impossible. I couldn't get there. So we had a, a meeting in my office, and we decided that the following day, the 12th, we would deploy in some way, we would figure it out the next day. So the 12th, I went into my office about 7 in the morning and we were told to report to the New York City Fire Department Fire Marshals Unit. I was introduced to two fire marshals and we went downtown to the site, to the first temporary morgue, temporary morgue actually, and we were assigned. I wasn't, I'm not going to say I was assigned, the fire marshals were assigned and I was, you know, with them to assist in any which way I could to actually try to identify human remains that were in, in the morgue as far as being civilian, policeman, or a firefighter. And I, did, I didn't stay there too long. I, mean, I spent an hour or two there and just, I, I couldn't deal with it. Plus they had more people that were more qualified to do that kind of stuff. And at that point I was with a young fire marshal that had lost his partner. The, actually, the, I'm not going to mention his name. He was, he was it, on the, he was a fire marshal then. He used to work in the firehouse, which was right next door to the fire marshal's unit. And his friend was still a firefighter there, and he was lost. And I went around with this guy actually trying to find his partner. And, you know, we, found, we found some human remains, and they were tagged and bagged and brought back to the morgue. And that was pretty much what I did the first day. Now, when you were at Ground Zero, uh, were you ever told or recommended to wear a mask? Were no. told to wear a mask? No. And, and nobody even nobody offered them. I mean, some people got them. Nobody from my unit, or the fire marshals for that matter, that we were working with, never even got them. So nobody told you to wear a mask? Nobody told you to no. that you need one? No. Were you ever told that the air was safe to breathe? Uh, believe me, you know, I spent the whole day down there, every day that I, that I was assigned there, and I'd go home and watch TV at night, and the news was all over the news. The air quality, I mean... After the first three or four days, I don't recall exactly when, but they said the air was fine, it wasn't dangerous. By 9-11, I was, you know, for an older guy in my job, I could keep up with the 20-year-olds. I was in excellent health. And now, after 9-11, after coming to power, how has your health been since? Uh, I would say within, within a year, maybe less, after 9-11. I started to deteriorate, not realizing I was really getting sick, though. I, mean, I was examined by the PA, and... Just from her examination and, and her questioning me as to my, the symptoms or whatever, she says, you know, I'm, you have pulmonary fibrosis. From what I, what I told her at the scar tissue, she says, you definitely have pulmonary fibrosis. But I'm going to send you across the street to get a chest x-ray to confirm it. Place the technician on her says, okay, you can leave now, but call your doctor. So we call the doctor, and she says, yeah, you, you have pulmonary fibrosis, no doubt about it. I, I, have, a, I have a life-threatening disease now. I mean, it's, I, I've spent five weeks in the hospital. I went to Good Samaritan Hospital, like Teresa said, and they couldn't treat me for the type of for the leukemia. So they transferred me to North Shore LIJ. And I went in right away. They put me on chemotherapy pills right away until I got the bone marrow results, which did confirm that I had leukemia. My, my white blood count was over 100,000. Normal range is like 4,000 to 10,000. So they put me in the hospital, and I went, within two days, I think, I was on intravenous chemotherapy which destroyed my body. I mean, I had so many complications. I had an intestinal blockage. I, had, I got shingles. I got the gout. I got pneumonia. I had pneumonia, which I said I might have for a long time. And within a couple of days, my right arm, this, this scared me to death. My right arm swelled up to five times what it is right now. The sur surgeons thought I had an abscess. And my, the doctors, doctor, my, my oncologist, put in a request for an MRI of my arm and a sonogram of my arm, which they never did. And hospital records will show that they did, but they didn't. I mean, believe me, they didn't. And this young surgeon came in. My arm got so bad, he decided he was going to go in and remove the abscess. So he started, I mean, cutting into this arm like you wouldn't believe it, at, at bedside to, to find no abscess. It, it turned out to be cellulitis. Antibiotics would have taken care of it. And I was actually already on the antibiotics that was taking care of it, but he got carried away. And because he went in so far and opened up an infection, look at that. 
I had to go. I had to go to emergency. I had to go to emergency surgery to clean up what what this idiot did. You know what I mean? It was gangrene. They thought he was going to lose the arm. And that started from a little. It started with a little bump that I had told him about. I mean, I had a little tiny bump in my arm. He just. They just. There is no. He has this, lost the this, this started out as a, as a bump on my arm the size of a dime, which I brought to the doctor's attention. I think maybe the second day I was there. Yeah, so they destroyed my arm. I mean, I cut out part of the muscle. This, this arm is... He could never go back to work just without a arm because that's a shooting arm. So you know, not that I was a muscle man before, arm but longer. this arm is useless. Yeah. All, all I can tell you is my life has changed. My health has changed so dramatically. Like... I was never a muscle man, but I was always in decent enough shape, like I said earlier, to keep up with the 20-year-olds in my job. And now I can't, I can't walk from here to the corner without, my, without running out of energy. I just totally run out of energy. I mean, I spent a lot of time in the hospital. I'm not finished. I have to go back for what they call stem cell transplant, which will hopefully put my leukemia in remission. i got to go back at the end of this month for four to six weeks it's going to take. I mean... I can't, I can't do anything I used to do. I used to play the drums. I can't play the drums anymore. I mean, my whole life has changed. And it's horrible. So you got fibroid fibrosis, leukemia, mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of other stuff. And this is related to 9-11. It, it all stemmed from 9-11. And, and believe me, in the beginning, I didn't really... I mean, the pulmonary fibrosis, I realized, had to be from 9-11. But leukemia, I didn't even know what leukemia was, to be honest with you. But it, it raised a question in my mind, how could this be related to 9-11? And the doctors, the oncologists, you know, they have a team of doctors and nurses that, that, that are researchers, on, you know, for leukemia. And they told me that, that all the stuff that I inhaled while, while I was working Ground Zero got into my body, and it just took this much time for, for them to incubate themselves into leukemia. I was never sick. I was the type of guy that was never sick in my life. This, and after 9-11, just, it just destroyed me. You look at my look at my attendance record at work. I didn't call them sick for, for 15 years. And now all of a sudden after 9-11, I'm starting to feel sick and sicker and sicker and sicker. And now, now here I am. You know, 60 pounds less than I used to weigh. Can't breathe right. Can't walk right. I feel like I'm getting eaten alive. What do you think of the government's response to it, that? It's horrible. It's horrible. I get nothing but... Uh, they're going to dispute my workers' comp claim. The government pension system is... Totally is doesn't have any my department my job. There's no clause or no part of the pension system that works for me. I mean, I work I worked 24 years in a job where if I w would have lasted another year, I would have retired with like a 45, 50 thousand dollar pension. Now I'm looking at maybe a 25 thousand dollar pension because there's nothing that covers what happened to me. They this month and they know what workers comp says. They might say no. It's not it's not related to 9/11. Then what? My, my time runs out with my job, which will be I believe in August sometime. I'm terminated. I get a 30% reduction in my pension, which I can't collect on 55. What do I do for those two years? Year and a half. I mean, go on welfare? I mean, welfare wouldn't pay half the bills in this house. Wouldn't pay a third of the bills in this house. I mean, I got Teresa, I got the kids. I mean, it's scary. It's scary. I mean, I hold no hatred towards anybody, but I don't have too much hope in the government just hearing other stories I've heard. But like, like my friend John, John Field, he got screwed. He's a guy that, that, that could have lost his feet. Yeah, it's just, it, it's, it's scary. That's, I, I don't have any animosity yet, because I haven't really officially been turned down by anybody. But I see it coming. I do see it coming already. You know, it's nothing like getting a letter from workers' comp saying that they're disputing medical bills. Are you kidding me? Uh, well, I'm not sick? Look at me. If you would have known me six months ago, you'd say... He's sick. You should see it. I'm telling you, I was 200 pounds. I'm down to maybe 145, 150 now. I just hope things change for the better. The kind of work that you're doing, with, with putting this kind of stuff on the, on the internet, and John Field, John Field, all his efforts, you know, confronting politicians, congressmen. I, mean, I think I think it's great. I hope eventually it's going to work. Eventually it's going to work. I hope something works for me because I don't know where I'm going to be sitting a year from now.